Hello there, Long everybody. Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is me, Jonathan Alexander, and I'm here to host our show, Life, Laughter, Happiness. Today, I have my co-host, Barbara, here. Are you there, Barbara? Yes, I'm here. Hi, everybody. Good. Now, our guest today is Mercy Smiles. And um, the thing that's interesting that I've heard about you is uh, you survived being in a religious cult. Am I accurate in saying that? Absolutely. Yes, you're so right, Jonathan. That's exactly that, right. That must Whoa. Have been rough. Hi, Mercy. Hi, Mercy. Hi, hi Barbara. Uh, I'm Barbara. Uh, hi, Barbara. Yes. And we are both so excited to talk to you about this. I mean, it is an intense subject. So. Wow. wow. We are so glad that you're on yeah, the show it was today. A, yeah, it was a very intense experience. <laughs> wow. Well, was this before or after your college education? Because I was reading about you, and, I mean, maybe you learned a lot from that experience and then went back to school, but I just would like to know the order in your life, how, how things happened. So a lot of people think that if you got caught up in a cult, then more than likely, you know, you don't have any education, you're not smart enough. Um, but really it's the opposite of what um, the, the data is, and I don't know the exact data, people with education, professionals, executives, full prey to cults just as much as anybody would. And so there is a recipe. There's a perfect recipe why somebody will fall into a cult. And so just to answer your question, Barbara, this was after my degree. This was after I became a qualified social worker. And so I worked as a professional... Oh, Mercy, hold on. Maybe that is why you were able to see the craziness or whatever you experienced or you were able to see when maybe other people were not able to because, you know, you you studied people, basically. Well, I wish that really helped me at the time, but it didn't. It worked against me because of my social work background. My name is Mercy, so... (laughs) That 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 um alludes to that I'm very merciful, um and so I can no, I, deal with a lot of abuse no. because I'm very merciful. I'm very forgiving of others. I, I, I you know I to. think the best of people. Yes. Well, I well, thought that was the minute I saw your about, name. I thought. Yeah. I wanted. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I wanted John, to comment on what you said. About, sorry. I was going to comment on what you said about educated people being all the cults. You know, it's sort of funny because, like, there's another um, – there's a cult that, that I refer to called Westboro Baptist Church. And and they, you know, are very, very legally savvy. Like, they're the kind of people that will, you know, like – it's like what they'll do is they'll, they will – they were legally – it's like they went and they picketed a, a funeral of, a, of an head soldier. And they went to the Supreme Court right. and they won their case. So obviously, you know, they're savvy enough to be able Correct. to do that. Now, if they were, if they had like, if they had like a ninth grade education, there's no way they could yeah. win their case because it would be like everything would be, everything would be, um, you know, everything would, they wouldn't know what to do. They would be like, well, wait a minute, you can't do that. That's against the law. You know, oh, okay. I mean, they're very smart about it. Common. They know enough to. Right. What? So is I hear what you say that they're very common, very grounded. Yeah, very smart. Well, but, so uh, Mercy saying, okay, you it does not have to do with education or how smart you are at all. Anybody could be pulled into this trap. So tell us, what can you tell us what this cult was and and your experience? Absolutely. So uh, this cult was um, called 
um, a ray of hope ministries um, and they're based in Georgia and Texas. They kind of move around, but um, I just wanted to pick up on what you said about um, educated people. Well, one of the things about educated people is that they have a lot of value to bring and they have assets. And so that's something that cult leaders are looking for is to um, rub people of their assets. So, you know, if they're middle class, smart executives, they're more than likely they're homeowners. They have a home. Right. They have a well-paying job. These are all things that the cult needs in order to survive and thrive. And so, you know, there is... Um, there is uh, some things that they're looking for in order to build. And so not to say that someone who doesn't have any of those things have nothing to offer, but they have something else to offer, maybe labor in the church, the ministry, or the, or the cult group. Uh, they can give off their labor and be enslaved. But uh, they are looking for people that can add value. Well, that is Sorry. making sense, and that is not surprising, but it also is sad because a religious organization should be only thinking of helping. I mean, of course, you have to think about yourself to survive and put their food on their plate, but not really trying to seek people out to suck you know, whatever they can out of the person. And so is that what you, did you ever feel that? Or how long did it take you to notice some negative signs from this group? Good question. So initially, I, I, it's difficult to say, but initially they do love bomb you. So initially you're going to experience a lot of love, a lot of nurturing, um, they're very caring individuals. They're very likable, extremely charismatic, and uh, will woo you over. It's like that honeymoon period. And so they're very art- skillful and very artful about how they do that. And uh, they have a way of picking up your personality and your weaknesses and the things that you're really looking for in terms of a need. And they know how to feel, fulfill that need, especially like an emotional need, just in the same way that gangs do. With gangs, you know, they'll prey on young boys that don't have a father in the house so that they can present their their organization as a brotherly, bigger brother, um, father looking out for son kind of bonding relationship. They make sure they intertwine that uh, with everything else, and that's the part. Um, that they want so bad that it's hard for them to leave. So so you asked me, when did I see some of the bad stuff? So I would say probably like four months in. But because there was an internal need for love, there was a need to be validated, a need to be accepted, a need to be, um, a need to be mentored. Like I really wanted to be mentored, and I wanted to get closer to God. And so because I had that need and they had the time to mentor because it was a strategy. And so now, they worked very hard. To, so say that again. I was just going to have a question. It does seem that in my opinion, um, you know, I was, I was, it's so funny because we oftentimes we don't know what the definition of a cult is because cults, you know, religions, or they're all kind of a little strange. I do think that it becomes a cult when it starts to interfere with your relationships with people outside the cult or outside the religious organization, like, um, you know, having friends. And, and, um, and I mean, obviously, if this were a cult, like, you know, the, you know obviously my guess is they probably stopped you from having friends, right? Outside the outside the religious cult, yeah. See, and um, and when they stop you from doing that, they that that is the problem. Because I always hear it's like, oh, my brother, my brother-in-law, my brother, he he went and he joined the religious cult, and and I can't get in touch with him. You know, I mean, you understand what I'm saying? Correct. Yeah. 
<laughs> Absolutely. Yes. And um, that's exactly what they do. And that's called isolation. So they work very hard to isolate you from, from your friends and your family, your network, your support network, your social network, your professional network. Um, that's the only way that they, that they will be able to um, possess you and have power over you. And so one of the things is that they're very jealous of your connection with other people. As long as you have contact with people outside of the group, then they don't have control. And that's a major issue because their whole premise is they have to gain control. That's what they want. And so control over whether or not you want to go back to school, whether or not you want to get a job, um, all these things uh, will block their plans if they don't control you. So they work they work um, systematically, like you said, um, to control every area of your life so that you won't have any outside influence that will oppose any decisions that they make about your life. So for instance, I wanted to go back to school, and um, it was a big issue. It was a big issue for me to go back to school. In fact, it was a big issue, the fact that I wanted to work. It was, a, a, I mean, like a major issue. I mean, you'd think like I was doing something like terribly bad, okay, like committing a crime or something, okay? But in their eyes, I was. It was almost like, oh, if you, if you, if you want to do that, you're not going to be able to last. You're not going to be able to cope out there. The, the, you know, uh, the, the world is a bad place. Uh, you need to stay safe in here. Uh, that's not what God is saying. And see, when they begin to bring God into it, that's when you're like, oh, maybe they know more than I know. And that's where you really tower in and really just like, okay, and just give in. And so that would happen repeatedly with me, repeatedly. And uh, everybody else, you know, uh, wanting, you know, having aspirations and you've been told, no, you can't do it. No, you can't pursue wow. your passions. Okay. How no, often do you go um, to their meetings? Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Mercy. I just, sure. as you're talking, I'm try- I am envisioning all of this. And so is it a big meeting how, and how often, or do they house people? Like the they house the people. Oh, correct. They house people and they also have meetings too. So the meetings, I'm going to say maybe like three days a week or something like that, um, three That's days often. a week. That's a lot. Um, yeah, like three days what a week. What is their base? I mean, are they Jesus believers or yeah. what? Yeah, they believe, they, they believe in Jesus. Um, they believe in Jesus. Uh, how I explain it or how I've come to understand what happened is, um, and, and the thing is, if you met them today, you'd say they're really nice people. They're not well, horrible yeah, they know what they're people. doing. They're, they're, right. It's kind of a, it's a grooming, you know, it's the system, like you said, but it's like a grooming, you know, they probably Absolutely. deal with everybody differently. If they find out, yeah. who knows, with the interview, the first interview, all of your wants, passions, yeah things that are bothering you. I mean, they find out your deepest, darkest secrets, and then they go to work on you. And it's so scary. It is scary because they are very innocent looking. They're actually seniors. They're seniors. So we're not talking about a young blood. They're senior citizens. Wait, I didn't, I still didn't catch that. Oh, they're senior, they were senior citizens. citizens. So they're like, they're, yeah, they're oh. senior citizens. Yeah. Are so all of them? We're not talking all of them? about. So that's everybody over 65, senior citizens. And no, they all the, um, are the leadership. Citizens. No, oh. the leadership. The leadership, yeah. So right. they're very yeah, mothering and very, yeah, and very, el- you know, you, you know, you respect your elders and, you know, you expect them that's to know. Yeah. Um, yeah, right. so that 
that's all that all plays into it. They're very, um, you know, like a mother, uh, auntie, uh, like a like a grandmother, nurturing right. but very twisted and very controlling. Um, okay, what is you their know, goal and, though with you? What is their end goal with a member? What are they trying to do? What would be their main end result that they're going? to Yay! I got them! I got them! I mean, why? Well, they, well they, their heart is to continue to spread the gospel. So they have a heart to uh, spread the gospel and build their vision. They're very committed to their vision and very devoted. Um, and they want to continue to expand and build people. So their whole philosophy is we're building and mentoring people so that they can become leaders and they can go off and preach and teach. And so that that sounds all good, but their methodology behind it is extremely um, controlling, manipulative, and domineering. And so how I made sense of it, because I didn't see none of this. Like you said, how did I know? I didn't see most of it until I left. I just didn't see it. I couldn't see it, and I didn't see it. Okay, I just knew something was off. I couldn't figure it out. Um, I couldn't figure it out. And, of course, in that process, I was actually numb in that process. I was zombified. I was numb. Okay, so I had checked out. So, in other words, I was already depressed. Depression had already sunk in. Okay, because you're living, but you're not allowed to live. And um, to the extent where I even had a meeting with her, and I said to her, I've been praying that God kills you. And the reason why I've been praying that is because I can't live with you being alive. That's how controlled I felt. And yet in that statement, in that statement, leaving was not an option. It was not an option. It didn't come into my mind. It was like the only way I can actually live as a human being on this earth is if one of us dies. And she's older, can't she die? So, and, and, I, and I'm saying this because this was actually a confession. I felt guilty. I felt terrible. Um, I confessed it to her and said, I feel really bad. I shouldn't be thinking these thoughts. Because um, they had a system of you always confessing your sins. Oh. So you never okay. So you never could wait, really. What did she? What did she say? What was her response when you said that to her? <laughs> she she didn't say anything. She didn't say anything. It didn't mean Maybe anything. Maybe she was not surprised. Maybe she was not surprised. Yeah. It wow. didn't mean anything. After you uh, left, did you see anything. anybody else that? Did, I'm sorry uh, for the interruption. I was going to ask you, did anybody else, after you left, did you find anybody who had made bad comments about them too and had escaped? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. Yeah. How and did you um, find even when them? I left, even when I left, a lot, a lot of people left because I left um, because I was one of the leaders and one of her very close leaders. Okay, and so I did things that wasn't right neither. Okay, um, because I was that close to them, and they would ask me to um, instruct people. So I wasn't right neither. Okay, and so when I left, I had to call a lot of people and just really apologize and say that was not me. I was under, I was under her thumb, and I did a lot of things, and I was not all fully awake. And I allowed myself to be controlled, and I said things, and I did things that was not right. It was not kosher. It just was not right. And so I called a lot of people on the phone and actually apologized to them and repented to them and said, please forgive me. Okay, please forgive me. I was wrong, and that's not me. I'm a new person now. I've, 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 I've got away from them. So if you, if you, you know, if we have a relationship, just know 
I've got nothing to do with them, and I don't think that way no more. And so I really had to, when I left, I really went through a process of um, deprogramming. I had to deprogram myself from a lot of the ideology and the way they believed. I had to uh, get rid of a lot of things. Like, for example, I couldn't wear black. Uh, black represented death, so I couldn't wear black. Um, so I got rid of a lot of my clothes. I couldn't um, go to a gas station. And um, you know how they're numbered at the gas station? If, it was not, yes. if I pulled up at number six, I, I would have to move. If I was in the supermarket and I pulled up at a number six, checkout number, I would have to leave. Why? So there was a lot of rules because they had a system of what was right and what was wrong. And so all these things represented something negative. And so I yeah, couldn't go to number six. So this, um, because they believed that number six um, represented like death and destruction. So I couldn't go to number six. Because then there'll be a ripple effect at the um, with the um, the ministry, and it will well, have an yeah, effect on yeah, everybody I mean, else. How do you handle say the month of June? Oh, month of June was incredibly like difficult. Because incredibly June difficult. is the sixth month. Correct. Of the year. Yeah, it was a very difficult month for us. I don't subscribe to that feeling and thinking, but um, June was like, oh, no. It was like, get ready for war. Like, June is just going to be the worst ever. Like, just, you know, we had to even prepare for June. Oh, wow. Did you enter with anybody else or just completely alone? Um, I actually got a few people in there. Oh. And, you know, I felt guilty for years. Um, because I've got a lot of people too? involved. I'm sorry? Did you get them, did you take them out though? Did you try to help them out when you left? Uh, some of them, yes, and some, no. Some did not want to leave, so but some did, They were yeah. hooked. And, yeah, they okay, were so too. Do you, okay, they obviously hurt you. I mean, emotionally they did when you were saying that you had to. Yeah. Uh, do all of those things, and you were so triggered by many things afterwards. So they did hurt you so much. What else did they do? Were they able to suck out money, or did you almost move oh, in? Yeah. Oh yeah. Whoa. All of that. All all of that. Um, and what just not me too. It? Because you know maybe they tried to get you to work for them as well. Did they try to get you to? Speak or be a leader? Oh, yeah. So I was a leader, and that's one of the reasons why they didn't want me working or doing anything else. They wanted they wanted my life for them. I was to work for them. Like, I didn't have a life outside. They didn't recognize that, nor would they acknowledge it, because their mind or thinking was, you were sent to us for a reason and to help us to build our ministry. Like so you're just a any aspiration for them. Sit again? Like it, they wanted you just to be a disciple, like a disciple, Correct. like in Correct. the Bible. Correct. Correct. Exactly. That was the end goal and that was their vision. A career. They, you know, what if somebody had a very great career that they built for many years and entered into that religious group, and then they quit their job, and they never could get it back. I mean, that would be a pretty bad career ruin right there. Oh, but that happens. Oh, that happens. Oh. That happens. Yeah. Yeah, I remember there was an older gentleman. He was doing his, um, I believe it was a master's. I don't think it was a PhD. I think it was a master's. And he had his thesis to do, just one piece of work. It was his thesis and I believe an exam. And she discouraged him and discouraged him from finishing it. 
And, you know, he was having a hard time. He's like, no, I believe God is telling me I need to finish what I've started. And she was just pressuring him, saying, no, nope, that's not what God is saying. God is saying that you're not supposed to do that. You were supposed to learn from the course, but you wasn't supposed to gain the qualification because that's going to make you prideful. And so nobody wants to be called prideful. So she would play on that and um, just make, you know, one feel really guilty uh, by her assassinating your character. Oh, yeah, they could. And so I am wondering if you're afraid because they seem so controlling and they don't want to be exposed at all. So are you ever afraid to say their name of their organization um, of retaliation maybe by them? Well, yeah, this is the first time that I've actually said their um, their name. This is the first time for me, and so... It it is wow. challenging. I, I'll tell you the truth. It is challenging. It is. But people need to know this. Um, I know, you know, even when I left, somebody um, put, um, put something out there on Facebook, and everything they said, I, you know, I agree with it. It wasn't me. I don't even know who did it. But um, there was other people that was aware, and somebody said they need to be exposed. And so... You know, people are still getting caught up in that organization even to today, even with them getting elderly. They they haven't changed, um, and, I, and I really believe that they're, they're narcissists, they're sociopaths, because there is no feeling. Like I said, when I told her, you know what, I've been praying for God to kill you just so that I can because I can't physically breathe. I feel so controlled. There's... They don't flinch. There's no flinching. There's no remorse. There's no, well, I'm really sorry. There's no apology. There was never apology. Never apology. Um, there was never. That's a, that's a problem that, that you're having, and aren't they there to help? And they don't even reply to you. They don't even try to help you with the problem. Yeah. I, you yeah, know, so I, I to kill somebody and you know dreaming about killing somebody and having those thoughts and they just don't even they don't even acknowledge it. So that's that's pretty bad. And do they ever do anything physical to anybody like their children? Are they abusive physically? No, no, no. They didn't. No, they didn't. Okay. But under their under their um. Under their care or jurisdiction, or under, um, under yeah, under their care, um, some things happened, and it was due to neglect, and it was due to them forcing people to take care of other people's children when those individuals didn't want to, but they were forced, um, and that was I didn't even understand at the time, but. It wasn't until I left that I realized they were getting money for it. So they were they were collecting oh. money to have people's children, but they didn't take care of the children, and they didn't check to make sure that the people that they put in place to take care of them um, wanted to or were the right guardian. They didn't care. It was I didn't even know if they were getting money. It was about the money that they were getting. And so under their care... They did not, um, they didn't ensure that it was a safe environment, it was a safe place, because they don't have any feeling. They just wanted the money. And so they managed to convince people to release their children to them, and they would assign people to take care of them, and they were getting the money. And those that were caretakers wasn't getting anything. Um, they wasn't getting anything, period. They had to use their own resources not knowing that they were actually pocketing money and um, those those guardians had no say-so, no say-so. And so what that oh, does wow. is it, it places people in position to nurture when they don't want to nurture, okay? People's frustrated, they're depressed, they're zombified, they don't want to. They don't even like their own life, so... If you're looking after somebody's child and you don't like your own life and you can't, 
you can't, you don't have a voice, then you're going to take out your anger. You're going to take out, um, you're not going to be nurturing as you could be if it was under, under your control, under your, um, your aspirations. Right. Of course. Wow. So then something bad happened with that. What are the houses like that they offer people? I'm just curious about that because somebody gets in a home and they're taking care of the expenses for that, uh, the group, the cult. If they're taking care of it, they could hold that over somebody's head because if if they leave, they're going to be homeless. Correct. Yeah. So it's a, it's a, it was a real burden. It was a real burden. And, uh, you know, people given a, a burden without an outlet, without any say-so, and was forced, um, it doesn't create a nurturing environment for a child. No, it doesn't. And if they were doing it with that, with the care of that, they're probably doing it in many other little ways and begging here and there, and it adds up for them. Yeah. Uh, oh, how you long were you that, uh, in, in, I was just going to ask, how long were you in the cult? Eight years. That is eight a long years time. Eight years on and off. Right. Yeah, eight years wow. on and off. Mm-hmm. Because you, you probably make friends. You feel like that's your support system. I can understand it, how you could get sucked into that, because if you leave, you're weighing your options. Well, you am going to lose all of the, my friends that I've made, or, you know, a lot of different things you could be going through a person's mind. I don't know if it's going through, if it's going through your mind, but I can imagine people are somewhat embarrassed because, they probably raved and raved and raved about this group Correct. that they're with. And, and then all of a sudden, oh, no, they're bad, and I have to go. And they don't want to admit that to people. So there's Correct. many reasons. And I, I understand. You didn't know how to get out. But how did you, though? How did you finally just break away and then know what they are and never go back? So what happened with me is um, um, I had to go to England. Um, I had a trip. I had to go to England. Um, and so I was away from them. And so because I was away from them and I was in England with my family and friends, that kind of rekindled who I was. But that still wasn't enough. But it was, it was, um, it was the beginning. And so while I was in England, I was there for a couple of weeks, I had a dream. And in this dream, it was like, it was like a horror movie. You know, when you're in the house and, um, the, you know, the, the, the monster's trying to get in and you run to get a phone, you pick up the phone and then um, the cord has been cut. That scene was well, I've never in had the dream. That. Oh, okay. You sure have. <laughs> These are like you really in the 80s and the 90s where the, where the um, I, yeah. telephone cord was cut. Oh. That's so that horrifying. happened in the dream. Right. So it's what? like the, the monsters are coming. I'm trying to get help. I pick up the phone. It's cut. And I'm like, what am I going to do? And so the next scene was everybody was a zombie. Everybody was a zombie in that ministry. And we was all walking on the street marching. And I mean, like, immaculate marching as if we was a band or as if we was um, an army, military army, but we was marching. And I saw the leaders, and they were governing everybody. Everybody, I looked to the left, looked to the right, everybody looked the same, and they were just zombified. No expression, no awareness, nothing. They were like a true living dead. And so I was alive. And so in my head, I, I was telling myself, run. There's a gate. When you see the gate, run for your life. And so that's what I did. And I heard a voice in the dream say to me, run for 
Yeah, no. I mean, it was bang, bang, bang. And I ran as fast as I could. I spoke to my body. I thought, like, everybody was going to chase me. I thought the leaders were going to chase me. I thought the people were going to chase me. I ran through the gate and got out. I looked back, and nobody missed the beat. They didn't, nobody even flinched. They all just kept on marching. Nobody moved. And, of course, the leaders were like prison wardens. That's who they were. They were making sure everybody was in line, and they were like taskmasters. They had a whip. And when I woke up by that dream, I was sweating. I was frantic. I started panicking. I couldn't believe it because I knew God was speaking to me and saying, get out. Run for your life. Whereas I thought everything was God, God, God. And now I'm actually hearing God say, it's a lie. It's false. I'm not there. There's zombies and the leadership. They are controlling and they're taskmasters. And it's a prison. And get out quick. And that's how I knew to leave. If I didn't get that dream, it would have taken a little bit longer. Um, But that dream broke everything. Every chain that was linked to my mind, that they linked it to God. And, of course, I never wanted to be in the opposition to God. Okay? So they kept me submissive because they could spiritually abuse me by using the Bible, by using scriptures, and by using God. The moment they did that, I was pacified. But here God was speaking in a dream, I'm not in agreement with. Run for your life. Wow, that was so real, the dream. And you probably knew that that meant to get out because your dream that you described was pretty much how they are in real life. They were zombie-like. They were not flinching. They did not have any emotion. And... I just really hand it to you for believing in your own dream because some people would just say, oh, well, that's just a dream. So, Oh, no, this dream really was loud. It. It, yeah. it, it, I mean, I woke up in a sweat. I mean, I thought it was real. I mean, the dream was very, um, it was very heavy. It wasn't something I just rolled out, you know, just rolled over bed and said, oh, I just dreamt something. It was so loud. The noise, the thumping, run for your... I mean, it was so dramatic. I I woke up shaking. I literally woke up shaking, and I was screaming. I was frantic. And, of course, it broke through the brainwashing. And I I just kept on saying to myself, it was a lie. Like, God, are you serious? I was screaming. In real life, I was screaming. As soon as I came out of that dream, my brain had just been through, like, a shock. I was in total utter shock. I couldn't believe this thing was breaking. Like, the whole foundation from that dream was breaking. Like, what you thought it was is not. Almost like if you found out that your father is not your father after thinking that for 30 years. It was that dramatic. It was that intense. It was like I built my life around this. And then, of course, the embarrassment. I was like, oh, my God. Everybody was telling me this. How did I not see it? How did I not get it? Oh, because I was going to ask you that. Were other people recognizing what you were in and warning you, like friends and family? And you, they were. Yes. Oh. And even and that's their friends and family warned them too. Their, their friends and family was like, listen, you guys are going in the wrong path. Right? And uh, people would say to them of their peers, bishops and pastors and, uh, you know, they would say to them, you know, you guys are turning into a cult. And they would tell us this. They would say, oh, Pastor so-and-so from that church, guess what? They think that we're a cult. Isn't that weird? 
That's what they would say. Oh. So they didn't really like believe they, that at all. Can you give us okay. a no. definition of a cult so we just really know what is a cult, the true definition? Well, I would say a cult is, is an organization, a group um, that has a certain belief system that really hinges upon certain characteristics. And it's the traits and the characteristics that really defines it. And that is control, domination, and manipulation. The twisting of words. Would you say that a cult is is something that interferes with your relationship with your family? Let's say that this cult, this this group that you were in, had not interfered with your relationship with your family at all. I mean, they didn't care about you, you, you having friends. They didn't care who your friends were. They didn't care where you worked and everything. Do you think it would have hurt you as much, or do you think you would have stayed? Or well, even when we think about domestic violence, okay. one of the reasons why it's powerful is because of the isolation. So isolation is a huge part of it in order to control. Because okay. the input, like I said, that the fact that I went to England, they couldn't control me there. The friends and the family was there, and it reminded me of who I was because part of being in the cult is that you are cloned. You go through a process of being uniformed like everybody else. You have a language that everybody shares, like the number sixes. And uh, if you... If you hang out with your family, they don't agree with that stuff. So, and they don't share in that language. They don't understand that. So, having a language, having a look, um, sharing the same belief system, but more importantly, being isolated. Because without the isolation, you'll always be influenced by family, friends, TV, um, other resources, which is why they did not want us to go to work. They did not want us to go to college because the outside influence is very strong. And it can, can you like, tell us? we jump, you know, go ahead. I, I just want to know a list of, not all of them, but the rules, like the rules that they wanted you to follow. Because you mentioned TV. I mean, when you went home, didn't you watch TV or did you follow their rules? They didn't want you to, to watch certain things, I'm sure. Well, we didn't really have a rule about TV. Um, I mean, I myself, even to today, I don't watch TV. I didn't watch TV before them. Um, But they didn't really have a rule about TV, to be honest. Um, But they did have a rule about going to other churches, uh, being involved in other church um, groups, um, being with other, other interest groups. You know, even if we shared the same ideology, they were very jealous of any interaction. TV wasn't an issue. Um, some okay. of the rules. Um, what about the way you I dress? The, yeah, like, we could dress how we wanted to, um, but, okay, so I'll tell you one of the things that they did with me Um and other people too as well. So it's really about, how can I say it, um, auto-suggestion. Okay, so this is coming through auto-suggestion, subliminal. Okay, so they would uh, dislike what you're wearing and then spiritualize it. So now, now you've picked up on it. Now you're like, okay, I'm not going to wear that because it doesn't, they're not, they don't approve. So they didn't have a rule about it, but they did not agree with it. And so then you had it in your mind, and you knew how to obey. So you knew. And so this was, this was why, I, you know, a lot of people didn't see it, and because it was, it was extremely cleverly done. There were some things, there was not rules. But the, the seeking the approval and the validation was said really strong. So they could make things up 
and they would, um, you know, if I wore clothes, for example, I'm from England. When I wore clothes that I bought in England, it was a problem. They didn't have a rule about you can't wear clothes from England. But anytime I did, I was criticized in public, okay? Why? I was made fun of in public Why did they because not like to me? they were – right, so they spiritualized it. And the reason being is because it represents my identity, and they don't want me to – they don't want me to keep my identity intact. They want me to become a zombie for them. So one of the ways that you do that is by attacking the individual, attacking their individualism. So anything that was very unique to me, an individual for me and my experience and my background was under attack. So when people do that, you begin to not like yourself. And then you're now working to appease them. And all you're saying to yourself is, there's something wrong with me, there's something wrong with me. So I ended up not wearing none of my clothes from England, okay? And, I, in fact, I put them all in the bag, okay? This is how deep it got, okay? I, I, thought there was, I thought there was something seriously wrong with my clothes from England, like there was a spirit on there, because that's what they would say, there was a spirit on there, there's a spirit on England, and it's coming through the clothes. So, you know, I'm not, I, I, I don't want that. So I'm going to bag everything up, right? I'm going to get rid of everything. And that's what I did. So guess what? Guess what clothes was offered to me? Her clothes. Her clothes. So she took me into her wardrobe, um, her walk-in closet, and offered me her clothes. I'm a size 6. She's a size 26. And she is, like, 20 years older than me. So wow. now I'm a young woman... We're in an old woman's clothes, and they don't fit me, okay? But now I don't look like me, and I don't feel like me. And I'm not really me when I'm wearing clothes like that. It doesn't express me no more. So I got depressed very quickly, wearing clothes that I couldn't wear, wearing her clothes that don't fit me. And that's the type of things that would happen. There was no rule about clothes. But very quickly, for each person, she had a way of undermining your ability to choose what you want to wear, what you want to do in life, and to be spiritualized. It was always, you know, what? You know the devil, Spiritual. the devil, you know, yeah, it was always spiritualized. And, of course, you didn't want that, so you would choose her way. And, of course, she knows better, she knows best, and um, she's adorable, and, um you know, a mother figure. And, um, of course, you want to appease God. So, you How know, many ultimately. Were there? How many oh, leaders so were about, there? About the, about leaders, people go in and out. Those who are strong don't stay. Um, so there always was a revolving door. But if I throw a number, I would say about 15 leaders. If I say people um, at one time, I would say about 30 people. I think that's you a lot. You said revolving door. Uh, what do you mean by revolving door? Uh, some people that were strong, that, that knew who they were, or who had been involved in that type of cult, could discern what it is very quickly, and they would leave. So we were always told that they were disobedient, and we was always told that they're going to get cancer if they leave. We was told that they would oh. be divorced within like a year. And some of these things happened. And so, you know, it left us feeling afraid to leave because we saw some of this stuff happening to people. Okay, that is a big one right there. If they are getting brainwashed and they think they're going to get cancer when they leave, they feel like they have to stay. People are holding it in. Like they feel... Like, something's wrong. You might not be able to pinpoint it, but something's just always off and always wrong under those circumstances. But then they just live their life for years in that situation. It is sad. And I'm so glad that you got out of there and that you are exposing and you will be speaking and getting the word out about 
this organization and many others. And I noticed that this is going on a lot. Some stars are getting on the TV and talking about cults that they got caught in. Yeah. In Correct. Yes. Of. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I've heard some of them, and, I, and I'll tell you this. It's identical. It's almost like all cults are the same. All narcissists are the same once they have a group. Now, there is um, a psychologist. I can't remember his name, but um, it's on YouTube. And he did a documentary because he himself is a um, he is a narcissist or been diagnosed as one. And so because he's trying to understand himself, he did a lot of research and became a psychiatrist, psychologist. And so he has this spectrum. He figured out a spectrum of people on the narcissism spectrum um, who are social psychopaths. And so one of the things that he noticed from, from number one to number 10 is that if they were like a two or three, you know, they were highly functional, you know, and they could use it towards becoming successful. They're very aggressive. You know, they might, you know, push people down the ladder as they go up, that kind of a deal. Um, that would be like a three or something. But he said once they reach number seven, when they reach number seven and they have religious ideology, he says that's when they really are, they, they are susceptible to start cults. And that's when they're, they are, you know, unaware of what they're doing, but they're doing it and they have no feeling. Okay. They have no feeling at all because he was talking about himself. He has no feeling, no emotion. And um, according to the doctors, when you, when you um, do an examination of their brains, there is the capacity to feel and to have empathy is actually physically missing in the brain. Okay? So they don't have access. So anytime, you know, we would, sit, we would ask, you know, cry out for an apology, you hurt me, this and that happened. There was no remorse. There was nothing. They couldn't give nothing. Um, but more importantly, that was the seven. If it was mixed with religion, he said they became cult leaders. He said when they turn at eight, nine, that's when they have the ability to murder. And they don't always murder with their hands, but they can instruct people to actually do it. And they can convince and manipulate and be very conniving to get people to do it for them. Wow. To kill themselves. Yeah. And, and you know what? I, I really that dangerous. is a crime. That is a crime that now. Is. So, yeah. if, you know, you could get that uh, proof. That would really stop them because I saw that girl on the news that was just telling her friend that it's not really her friend, but like a ex-boyfriend to kill himself and he did and she I don't know if she ended up getting convicted but she was in court over that and it was serious I remember yeah yeah Mm -hmm. do you remember the outcome of that Mm -hmm. no I I believe she did I believe she did get sentenced though I believe she did get sentenced um to what extent I don't know but I believe she got sentenced um because that was that was terrible young boy yes yeah. And that's how they do it is through yeah. auto suggestion. They have an ability to suggest some things and um they 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 know your weaknesses and that's how they're able to control you. And you know, oh, they suggest okay. things. It's it's really a, a very big manipulation and I still don't know though. Do they know? if they're doing the manipulating or do they think they're just doing their work and it is the right way? And because you really brought up something that I just did not know that they are missing that part of the brain that shows emotion and well, not all emotion, but regret or feeling sorry. They're missing that part of the brain. So they, so they yeah. really are missing that. So then they probably, maybe they don't think they're doing anything bad. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they think they're doing anything bad because I've confronted them. Uh, when I had that dream, I confronted them. I confronted them. And all she could do is argue that with me and um, just defend herself. 
and just put it on everybody else. So she would reflect it, it so and good. say it's us and it's not her. Um, but there was so no remorse too. at all. I'm did sorry? It feel good to con- did it feel good for you to finally you know, confront her and confront them? Did that feel good? Did. Like, or- it did. It was mm-hmm. very it was good. a brave move. Um I I I started out by calling and um I was submissive for one hour. I kid you not. One hour, I stayed on the phone, and I was like, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am, while she was just ranting and saying it's my fault, it's everybody else's fault, and there's something wrong with us. Because I said to her, why is it that people can't make their own decisions? And she said, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not holding anybody. Uh, Everybody can do what they want. And I was like, no. Why is it that when so-and-so needs some clothes, you decide to go to Goodwill and buy them some clothes? Why can't they work? and buy their clothes. And then she just kept them going in. And I'm like, no. So I said, I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to argue. So for one hour, I let her say whatever she wanted to say. I even put the phone down, walked away, because I couldn't handle it. I came back, she was still speaking. And then I said, you know what? I don't even know why I'm even scared anymore. I, I'm not. So then after one hour, me and her argued for one more hour. When I say this was the first time I had really spoken up, we went toe-to-toe. I mean, I was shouting. I'm not even lying. I was shouting. I was screaming at her. Um, I've never done that before, but I was trying to get my point across, and I was not about to let her overtalk me. I said, enough is enough. I went down the line, this and that and this and that, and she just wasn't having it. And I just said, so we was on the phone for two hours. Wow. And I just said, and my heart, to be honest, my heart, I know it sounds crazy, but my heart was, if you can just show me there's a real reason, then I won't leave. I wasn't even trying to leave. I got that dream, came back, and I wasn't trying to leave. I just wanted some answers, and she couldn't give it to me. So I was like, that's it. I've got to leave now. I've got to leave. So even after that dream, if they had, I would have probably stayed because it was too much of a shock for me. But she just wouldn't give me nothing. She, she gave me nothing for me to say there's hope. There was no hope. Is this the city like, wow. of hope? I have to get the name of this place because I'm looking it up right now. Did you say it was called City of Hope Church? No. It's yeah. called oh. A. It's called A. Ray okay. of Hope. If you oh, put Ray of Hope, you're going to get this city ministry. Of hope. Oh, no. So, yeah. Okay, so it's going to be you. A. Uh, Ray of Hope. Okay. Ministry. And- are they? A, Michelle okay. Lewis. Okay. okay. It's good that you tell it again and all the details. So anybody who's listening doesn't go there by accident. A Ray of Hope Ministries. And Correct. can you give me the lady's name again? Yes. Uh, Michelle Lewis. Okay. And is this in Georgia or all around the country? Correct. Correct. Their their base is in Georgia, but um, they move they move um, in different places. And but you never did get housed by them. You did you always keep your own residence? No, uh, no, I was housed through them. Okay, and that's part. That's that's part. That's part. Yeah, that's how they really get you to probably stay. Yeah, and so do you uh, have to do a lot for them? You have to work for them to get the rent paid, to pay the rent. Well, you you're just part, yeah. Well, you're to... part, yeah. So it's like you're 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 part of the ministry. You're there for training. It's a training ground. Um, it's an apostolic prophetic training ground. So you know it falls in line with who I am, my my calling, my assignment. Um, and it was training and mentoring. And that's what I was looking for. And but yeah, I mean like yeah. Mm-hmm. Are they on so, social yeah, there media? Yeah, there were times I had my own residences. There were times I had my own residences, and there were times when I lived in um, their ministerial, they called it ministerial homes. 
What was it like, the homes that they offered? Oh, the homes are beautiful. I mean, that there's there's nothing. Um, the homes are be- beautiful. Beautiful homes. Beautiful, clean. So they needed a um, lot of money to have beautiful homes to provide. Correct. Confidential yeah, uh, environment. I found them. I don't like that yeah. word. <laughs> you know, I've never heard a church church type people use that kind of wording and psychotherapist service services is a group of counselors and psychotherapists. Oh no, no, no that's not it. Helping. That's not it. I don't think that's okay. it. Are you sure you got the right one? It would say um, the leaders Rhea. of Michelle and James Lewis. Okay. Because you're going to well, find a, a lot of a ray of hope. Yeah, ray of hope is very um, popular. So to get the okay. right one, you would have to do Michelle and James Lewis. Okay. Michelle I'll and James on Lewis. There. Yeah. Now, oh, because right now it has been an hour. We forgot to, in the middle of our show, do a shout out for you so the listeners to know where to find you because there might be somebody listening right now that needs help. So where could they find you if they do need to contact you? Oh, absolutely. They can reach out to me on Facebook. You can reach out to me on Facebook and um, I will be, I'll be honored um, to support you. Um, You know, I also have some books. I've written five books on this subject matter. Um, if you're looking Ooh, for support wow. material, yeah. <laughs> oh, mercy. I would yeah. love to feature one of your books for our book club that we're starting, our Life Left Your oh, Happiness okay. book club. Yes. Oh. Wouldn't that be great, Johnny? Mm-hmm. Well, because we will read it, and then we, we uh, blog about it, and then we move on to the next book, but all of that can offer a lot of promotion for whoever the author is that we choose. This month we're doing uh, our psychic counselor. We're going to read one of her five books, and then we would like to do that for you down the road. I find it to be very interesting. I'm sure it is a very interesting read. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we can definitely do that. No problem. Um, I can, I Where can, can we get your book? I'm sorry, said it. Oh yeah, um, I'm actually on Amazon. They can get it on Amazon, or they can get it through me. What is it called? But my name is Mercy Miles Jenkins. Okay. And yeah, I'm on Amazon. you now are married. You're now married. Correct. Mm-hmm. Great. Correct. So you got out of there. Mm-hmm. It is a long road, but you did it. You got mm-hmm. out of there, and now you are the perfect person to help anybody who needs to get out of a cult because you know the signs and you can see how a person, how far deep they're in by just simply talking to them because you've been through it. So I really admire what you're doing and it takes a lot of courage to expose something like this. But thank goodness, where do you live now? I'm in Massachusetts. Okay, so you're pretty far away from Georgia. Not real far, but uh, you know, just take care. Watch, watch your back because these people sound really serious. If they don't even oh, care, yeah. somebody, you know, I think that they'd rather have the person dead than leave. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got and out they're, of there. They're and you high. got married. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you wrote five books though. Five books. Wow. Right. Oh. Mm-hmm. And you're currently a social worker? No, I'm actually a pasta. <laughs> oh, you are? Oh, that's I'm actually wonderful. a pasta now, so I actually have a church. Yeah. I do oh, have a church goodness. myself. Oh. I was going to ask so, you if that led really you away me. from God. You know, I, yeah, I was I so worried that it for, was going to lead you away from God. It did. Word, it, did. But it did. It did. For a while. It did for five, yeah, five and a half years. And then I came back, and when I came back, he said, you know, you, you still have a call in your life. And he began to repair me, heal me, and, um, you know, remove the unforgiveness. So, uh, so I've forgiven them. Uh, I know they're great people on the outside. I just really have, um, um, I'm really, you know, pitiful 
towards them for what's going on with their health because I really believe this is actually a mental health issue. I think they're convinced that they're really supporting people and they're very unaware that they are like charlatans. They're very unaware that they are um, rubbing people from their destiny. I don't believe they are, they're aware that they're scam artists. I mean, that's what they are. But I don't believe, like most scam artists know they're playing a game. Um, but somehow, I don't know, I feel like they, they don't really understand it, but they're actually doing it, though. Oh, yeah. You know what, they, they've got to know. They've got to know a little bit, unless they're completely non-human. I mean, they have to plan it out. They have to know where they're going to get their money from. They have to, yeah. you know, interview the people right. to find out all the, they have to interview each You're person right. to find out their weaknesses. Why else would they need to know? I mean, I go to a normal church. Nobody uh, has found out anything about me. You know, I just go enjoy it. And then I'm free to go. This is just completely different people. Everybody who's listening, watch out for this kind of thing because they can ruin your life. And take you away from your family. Did you have to spend your holidays with them? Yeah, they wouldn't allow me to. So one of the things that I did when I left is we went on vacation. We did. We traveled internationally. Um, we um, had family um, cookouts. We would eat out at restaurants. We did all of that stuff because we needed to really recuperate and do all the regular things that most people did. So, you know, most people now, take the um, but we did those things. That, I have a question. You said that you sure. got your life back and you went to go see them for a few weeks. What made you go see them for a few weeks? Because I was trying to see if they would, would understand um, that they're really hurting people. And that's what I said to them, that you're really hurting people. And what can we do? No, no, no. I, I was I, coming from the stem. Go ahead. You said that you went to see your family for a few weeks, and that that's what six led you to have to go see your family. Did something bad happen with your family, or? Yeah, something happened, and I had to get back home. Um, but I really believe, when I was looking back at it, that God had to get me out, um, and that was the only way He can get me away from them that he was using that situation like a family need, like with my siblings, and that allowed me to get away because, you know, I, they couldn't, in other words, they couldn't stop me from going because otherwise they normally would have discouraged me. I want to know what type of things did your family and very close friends notice that made them leery of the group? Oh, I, I didn't look the same. I didn't dress the same. They, I didn't think the same. I made everything like be. Everything was spiritualized. Everything was like, for example, my friend. Um, I'm the godmother of her child, and she was having a party or something. And it's normal just to go, right? And especially if you're the godparent, right? I made I yeah. made this whole big thing up like I couldn't go. I made this whole big thing up like I couldn't go. And wow. it was it was some type of thinking like, Oh, I'm not allowed to be around people. Oh, you know, you know, uh um um uh, spiritually I'll be contaminated. It was some type of thinking, like it was it it was their way of thinking, but they you know, I started to breathe that type of thinking. Like, oh, I can't be around people. Oh, something bad's going to happen. You know, you know. so I start to hyperventilate. And so I would tell people, oh, no, I can't be there. I can't be there. This is not my, my time. It's not my season to be around you. You know, which doesn't make any sense. Right. Time or season. So things like that. Wow. What, yeah. what Johnny? That's, that's, what that's, did you say, that's, Johnny? Well, that's, an that's an interesting word. I've never heard of Wow. Mhm. It is. But you know, the main thing is you got out and you know what? 
I bet you really relish those vacations and doing things that you haven't done for so many years with the people you really love. And yeah, and then so that's a one good thing about it. You see, you're you're seeing the world and your life differently. You really must be grateful, and you must show a lot of gratitude. And now you tell me that you're a pastor. I love that. I think that's just absolutely wonderful. And now look at the life, and you're going to be able to touch so many people's lives with your testimony. Absolutely, yes. Yes, because um, that's a very interesting part, like you said. Um, You know, for a while I stopped praying, I stopped believing that there is a God, and um, I totally went off. Um, But God really um, brought me back so that I would understand that he still exists, um, I just had a very bad experience. And he also showed me how he was trying to rescue me over the years. It wasn't like he wasn't. He was trying to rescue me. And I just oh. couldn't see it because of the control was so thick. I, I, I couldn't see it. That's so sweet, though, that you saw the signs after in that God never was letting you down. He was trying. Yeah. Yeah. And he sent people to me, and they would tell me, it was just off. Wow. Well, thank you for sharing your story. And we're the first life left to have you. This is the first uh, to hear you come out and just boldly say their name. And that is a big step today. Yes, it is. Yep. Thank you. All right. Will you shut up, Barbara? Okay. Well, thank you so much. And thank you. uh, I want everybody to be able to find you. So go to Mercy, Mercy's Facebook page. I just want to make sure that I'm spelling it properly. M E R C E Y. Yeah, M E R C Y Miles M Y L E S hyphen Jenkins. Okay, on Facebook is the best way to find you then, or do you have also at your congregation website? Yeah, you could. They can also go to Mercy Miles Jenkins. So um, it's my name, Mercy Miles Jenkins dot com. Okay, wow, wonderful. I'm going to go check that out, too, and watch for my name because I'm going to put a request in to be your friend on Facebook as well. And if you ever need to come back here and talk about anything new, new discoveries on the subject, that would be so great. And we look forward to uh, having you take part in our book club, too. So, listen, thank you. I'm excited. Yeah, oh, good. Oh, good. Yeah, I just came up with the idea, and we are just starting. We haven't even read our first book yet, so I'm excited about that. <laughs> no. It'll get, it'll keep me reading, you know. It'll make me read. Right. For sure. So, so everybody, if you would like to hear this show again, find it anytime on our YouTube channel, Life, Laughter, mm-hmm. Happiness YouTube. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe and visit <laughs> us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We always post, usually daily, and we would love to hear from you and give us some feedback. And also, we have started our Roku TV channel, or our TV channel on Roku, Life, Laughter, Happiness, Learn, and go check that out, too. We're excited about that. And I guess that's it. Yeah, so thank yes, you so it. much for being here. That was really oh, interesting. You're so welcome. Was so good to get to know you, Mercy, and uh, you know, good luck and God bless you. Thank you. Your future, yeah, and your future endeavors. And so you have another community that is good, and we like freedom, don't we, Johnny? We like to be free. <laughs> so anytime you you're a part of our life, laughter, happiness community now. Yay! <laughs> Thank you awesome. so much. Yes. All right. Okay. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you, Johnny. Well, and for all that you, you did. Goodbye, Barbara. All right. Take care, you guys.